G'day and welcome and this will be the last of my brief videos demonstrating how to find the derivatives of implicit functions using implicit uh, differentiation. Now here you can see we certainly do not have an equation y equals some function of x. We could do that, we simply have a quadratic equation in y and technically we could use the quadratic formula and end up with some rather complicated expression for x but we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it in this form and find the derivative implicitly. Before we get started I will explain that this example also was found like the other two that I've just uh, shown you on uh, a web page produced by Dwayne Cooper a lecturer <clears throat> at the University of California, Davis. And in searching the internet, I stumbled upon his web page and I was very impressed with this, his selection of uh, 16 uh, implicit functions for students to differentiate and to solve problems with. And he's produced uh, work solutions as well. And I can highly recommend that for you. The link's in the description below the video. Now what he points out, I think this is example 14 or 15, it's towards the end. He points out that this is an oblique ellipse. You can see it looks very circular, x squared plus y squared, but it's got this term that, if, if you learn about matrices and rotating graphs using matrices, you'll learn why these appear. But uh, essentially, this produces an ellipse uh, like this. And the, I, I think this is negative 3 and th 3 and 3 and negative 3. So it's sitting in there somewhere. Okay? Just to give you some picture of what's going on. Now, what he asked you to do, asked students to do, is find the derivative implicitly and find where the gradient, the uh, tangent is horizontal. In other words, where we have a maximum position and where we have a minimum position. Now, without implicit differentiation, this would be rather difficult. Let's see how we go. Taking the derivative of both sides with respect to x, the derivative of x squared is 2x, that's easy, minus, now here we have a product. So I'm going to solve it, there'll be two terms, I'm going to leave a negative sign at the front. So the derivative of this, two terms. Derivative of x is 1, so 1 times y will be the first term. And then leaving the x alone, we now find the derivative of y with respect to x, which is y dash. Don't forget, every time a y appears, you're going to get a y dash, a derivative to y dx. That takes care of that product, x times y. Now we have this term, which is y squared. If we find the derivative Dealing with the power first, we get 2y, just the same as the root of 2x, if x squared is 2x. But, because there's a chain, we now find the derivative of this function inside, and the derivative of y with respect to x is y dash. It wasn't an issue here, because the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and I could put times 1, it's not going to make any difference and you've been doing that for, hopefully, quite a few months already, when you've been explicitly differentiating using the chain rule, product rule, equation rule, and all the rest. The derivative of 3 with respect to x is 0, since it's a constant. Now, I don't want this, these brackets here, so I'm going to remove them, and that negative sign will apply for both those. So I get 2x minus y minus xy dash plus 2yy dash is zero. 
If it helps you to leave the, the product signs, the multiplication signs in, please do so. Now, what have we got? These two terms contain a y dash, these two do not. So we'll throw those to the other side of the equation. And I'll get, I'll do it in two steps. I don't want to confuse people. Those stay the same. Now these ones going over, the negative y will become a plus y, and the plus 2x will become a negative 2x. I'll take this out as a common factor, so I'll get y outside of negative x plus 2y, y minus 2x. And I'll now divide both sides by this. Now, in the process of dividing, instead of calling it negative x plus 2y, I think I'll call it 2y minus x. So y equals y minus 2x over uh, 2y minus x. Rather well, nice little looking fraction, slightly unusual. Oh, goodness me. You must have been telling me I couldn't hear. I left the superscript off the dash. Well, there we go. There's the derivative. Now, to find the maximum and minimum values, I would have to set this equal to zero at stationary points. Now, if this equals zero, then all it means is that the numerator equals zero. So we would say, therefore, y must equal 2x. Now, look. At this stage, we have found the derivative implicitly. Let's solve the further problem that uh, Dwayne Cooper proposed. If we want the derivative equal to 0, we can see that y minus 2x must be 0, so y must equal 2x. And what we need to do is put that back into our original equation, which is the equation for this, and find out what values we get for x and y on this line where y equals 2x. Or if you like, if we graphed y equals 2x, it would be where the two, where the two lines intersect. Uh, you can see they're pretty much in the right positions. Now, I'm going to have to eliminate this. I'll just put where y equals 2x. I'll just eliminate this and we'll solve that on the next page. Well, here we go. Let's substitute 2x in place of y. So we get x squared minus x, and in place of that y, we'll put a 2x. And in place of this y, we'll put a 2x. Let's see what we get. x squared minus 2x squared plus 4x squared, don't forget the 2 is squared, to give us 4 and then x squared equals 3. Well, 4, 5, take away 2 is 3. Well, that looks rather interesting. Was I expecting that? 4, 3, yes. x squared equals 1. And if you're being a purist, taking the square roots of both sides gives you the absolute value of x is 1, and then x equals plus or minus 1. Or plus or minus x equals 1, and then this. Okay, could this be true? Well, it looks like it could be. And what would the y values be? Well, we know that y is twice x, so this would be the point 1, 2. And this will be the point where x is negative 1 and y is double that. And there you are. And you can verify that these points are on that by substituting x equals 1 and seeing what y is. Let's do that very, very quickly. If x is 1, we get 1 minus y plus y squared equals 3. So y squared minus y, just swapping those over. And then subtracting 3 from both sides. Sorry, my 
seem to have pins running out. And here we have to uh, factorize, and we have y minus 2 times y plus 1 is 0. That gives us y squared and minus 2y, or negative 2y plus y is negative y, and negative 2, it works. So therefore, y would be 2 or negative 1 from the two factors. And sure enough, we did this by substituting x equals 1. And you can see when x is 1, we have y equals 2. Notice we also get the value of negative 1. Here, we're not finding where the tangent was 0. We're simply finding what y values we get when x is 1. So when x is 1, we have these two y values pop up. But it's this one that has the horizontal tangent. And we just confirmed that. That was a lovely little example. And it's certainly, certainly a problem that you would not relish doing explicitly the way you've dealt with in the past. So this opens a whole new world for you, being able to find the derivative of unusual relations and unusual graphs. I'll leave it at that. Uh, unless people ask me further, I think I'm not going to do any more work for quite some time with explicit, sorry, with implicit differentiation. But as I said, I can recommend that you go to Dwayne Cooper's webpage. Please go to the link uh, in the discussion below the video. I'd appreciate it if you left a comment. I'd very much appreciate it if you liked the video, and even more so if you subscribed to find out about future videos. Thank you very, very much for watching.